Hey guys, tonight we're working on M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. This will be an RGB and a loom capture. My name's John Robinson, the Astrotard. This is Deep Sky. Hey guys, so we've got enough data here to go ahead and do the post-processing. And uh, it's all said and done, it's about 13 hours of data, and I've collected it over the course of one year. It's got 232 subs on it. The challenge that I had was that some of the data that I collected last year in April was rather light polluted using ZWO, you know, cheaper filters. And so the, the data is extremely flooded with uh, very, uh, a lot of light pollution and vignetting, which you'll see in the integration. The result is I had to do create some false flats to get rid of that stuff. Um, and maybe you've had a challenge like this where you thought, you know what, I, I can't use the data. It's, it's just so moon saturated, it's useless. Maybe this video will help you see that there is a way forward. You can still use the data by creating false flats. Okay guys, here's what I've got. Let me bring up the list of sessions here. So we've got uh, four sessions here, or maybe it's three. One uh, from the 23rd of April, 16th of April this year, both using Astrodon filters. And you can see here I'm using, for the most part, 10 minute exposures uh, and some five and one and two. Then uh, I have this session from last year, April 27th, 2019, using ZWO filters. These are the ones that have the moonlight challenges with them. All in all, I have 232 subs, or 12.9 hours, 13 hours of data. So let's go ahead and, and look at this. So after I integrated RG, B, Lumen, H, I had these files here. And again, the way I integrated them was using the image integration tool here in PixInsight. And I just grab the files like so. And then I added the drizzle files as well. And I was careful to use the exposure time as my weight so that, uh, you know, it would take into account those 10 minute exposures and give those more importance over the lesser time exposures. So here you can see extremely light polluted and also not well uh, calibrated in terms of the flats. I had a lot of dust bunnies showing up in here. Obviously I had some vignetting. The vignetting was because of the moon. So when I actually shot this last year in April, I had a uh, half moon that was interfering with session. Here you can see why. The moon's here and here's M51. And that is the reason for all this light pollution and vignetting in the corner because of all those 120s that I shot last year. But don't worry, we're going to fix this. There's a way to do this and there's a guy who's already provided uh, an instructional video on YouTube for how to do that. Here's a, here's a link to that person and the actual technique that he used. I'm going to show you how to clean this up. So in the end, here's our red, noisy, and vignetting. Here's our are green. Here's the uh, here's the blue. I had this little dimple that showed up here from the, the newer sessions. Again, I'll show you how to clean that up. Here's the noisy loom, terrible loom, almost unusable. And then here's the the H alpha, very uh, not very light polluted. It does a good job under under moon conditions. But all I really want are the, the pink highlights anyway. So that will serve our purpose fine. Uh, and then, uh, so how do you fix the noise? Let's start with the, the worst case, the loom channel. So here's what I started with. And I created a false flat. And it looks like, it looks like this. So you can see what this is going on here. It's basically a copy of this file 
with some subdued tones in it and I blinked out all the stars and removed the galaxy so that all you see sort of are the the blank spots now how do you do this it's really simple you create a copy of the file that you want you give it a new name let's call this fix and then you run the star remover tool on this so I let this guy run okay so after you remove the stars it looks like this now what we're going to go through is take these little white spots here and we're going to dab them out using the clone stamp tool so I like to use a size of I don't know 99 or something like that and all we're really trying let's zoom in here all we're going to do is just dab that out so you grab some data over here and you copy it over to there like this we're just dabbing that out just getting rid of that let's come back here and get some more just getting rid of the galaxy there just kind of dabbing it out like that then we're also going to get rid of these other galaxies that show up in here I'm careful to preserve the dust bunnies I want those in this flat false flat file because I'm going to use them to take out the dust bunnies in the main file let's make this one a bit bigger to cover that star completely there's another one up here Just trying to match the gradients that are in there for the most part. There's another one up here. Let's get rid of that one. And we'll copy this one as well. So you get the idea, right? So when you're all done with that, you accept the clone stamp. And then we're going to run a multi-level uh, transformation. Multi-scale multi -scale linear transformation on it. I've, I've created a shortcut called it Flat Maker. Here's basically what it does. You're going to set it to six layers and you're going to disable the first six. The way you disable it is just by unchecking this thing here. So you get the little X here for the first six. And for the residual layer, that's the only layer that's enabled. That's all we need for this. So layer six, all disabled, and we just want the residual layer. So here's what it looks like after you run Flat Maker on there. It sort of flattens it out like this. Okay, now we have all f our faults flat. All right, now I ran this previously. Let me go back to the one that I ran before. So here's my faults flat. And here's the original loom file that we started with. And now we're going to use the faults flat to get rid of all that crap that's in this image here. The way you do that is with pixel math. So you come in here to pixel math. And you just say the name of the file that you're starting with. You get only the, R, the, the black and white. Name of the file L times the mean of L flat. I get spell L flat divided by L flat. Now this formula will apply this file to this file and will essentially negate all that noise so we run that guy then voila there's what you've got so now i've i've essentially used that false flat to clear out and make more usable the loom data so i've used that same process for each one of these rgb l and h and here's the fixed r and it's compared to the original R. So here's the fixed red. Much better, much more usable, right? Similarly, here's the fixed green file and the blue. And especially that loom, which is very noisy. So you get the idea, right? Running that false flat will essentially clean it up. And then I use pixel math again to just mix these guys up. I said R fix, G fix, and B fix. And I just said an RGB mix. And here's what it came out looking like. Not bad. 
I mean, it needs to be cleaned up. But you could see the data in there is pretty good, you know. And we got rid of all, all that vignetting in the corners, which will, so it's it's a good starting point. So that's my RGB. So once I had the RGB, here's my starting RGB. Then I ran this script, multi-channel LRVB. And by doing this, what I'm doing is taking the L fix, the loom file, applying it to the RGB. And I've already run that. When you do, you get the LRVB file. So this is the RGB plus the loom together. And the details are coming in quite nice. I'm starting to see some of the lines show up there. And this is before stretching it or pushing or anything. So the it's just native color. It's the way it looks. Now we're we're gonna kind of work on you know getting rid of some of the noise on the outside and making the background look darker. So to do that, I uh, I created a copy of LRVB and called it Final. And don't worry about the colors, but let, let me show you what I did to that to achieve this way. So let's go to the finals here. So the first thing I did was an uh, ACDNR to get rid of the noise. I had some asteroids and things, so I had to clean it up with clone stamp. I adjusted using a mask the histogram so that I could get the background to look darker and protect the stars and the galaxy while well, I did. And then I pushed the colors a little bit. I guess I did. Then I also applied a photometric color calibration. If you guys have never used that, essentially it goes out online and and uh, downloads some files and checks the color of your image versus a reference standard and makes some adjustments to the white balance of your image to try to get more true color in there. I ran that. Then I run SCNR to get rid of the green. And then I pushed the curve transformation again on the background. So that's how I ended up with that. I took one step further. Once I had this file in final form, I again used another script. This one was the HARVB where I started with the H fix and I applied that to the final like this. Essentially what we're doing is adding that H data. Let's look at that H data. Hydrogen alpha data here just to grab some of those pink highlights in the hot uh, stars. And the result is after applying that it looks like this. This is my final final image. So we've got some of those pink highlights in here from the H alpha. And we got a lot of detail in here from, you know, the 232 subs. And uh, the noise is cleaned up. The background is good. You don't see the vignetting. I'm calling this done. Now, I could certainly, you know, this, this is not perfect by any means, but, you know, for a Bortle 7, Bortle 8 sky condition, with lots of noise, including light pollution from a moon, I'll call that pretty decent. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments uh, if you have any feedback for me on the technique that I used or any questions, uh, or if you have any tips for me to how I can improve my process, let me know. And again, thanks for tuning in. Stay safe out there. We'll see you next week.